Number nine, a poisonous plan. Like many young women, Ella Perry struggled with her body image, but the British student's insecurities became all-consuming in ways that not everyone experiences. Her weight was perfectly healthy according to medical standards, but Ella despised her body. By the time she turned 21, her obsession with losing weight had completely taken over her life. In a desperate bid to shed fat that only existed in her mind, Ella went online and bought some diet pills that contained a toxic substance called denitrophenol, or DNP. It's similar to the explosive TNT and is considered unsafe for human consumption. But the pills seemed to work, and it felt harmless to take more and more of them. Then one day in 2015, Ella began to feel sick. She drove to the emergency room, where doctors discovered fatal levels of DNP in her body. Because there's no antidote to the substance, all they could do was try to stabilize the young woman while fate took its course. Medical staff did their best to save Ella's life, but their efforts were in vain. Her metabolism spiked wildly while her body overheated. The diet pills were burning her up from the inside out. Less than three hours after taking the deadly dose, Ella stopped breathing. She was placed on a ventilator, and then her heart stopped beating. In light of the needless tragedy, government officials pleaded with the public to use utmost caution when buying diet pills online and to make sure they're ordering an approved product. Number eight, the cotton ball diet. Thanks to the internet, almost any information somebody could want is at their fingertips. It's a great resource, but the World Wide Web is also sometimes the worst place for a vulnerable or desperate person to turn to for advice. Take, for example, the cotton ball diet, which involves suppressing one's appetite by eating up to five cotton balls soaked in juice per sitting. The diet reportedly emerged in the modeling industry but it was heavily promoted by internet users who took to YouTube and message boards to boast about their success with it. But eating cotton balls is extremely dangerous and potentially deadly, and medical professionals were quick to speak out against it. For one, most cotton balls aren't made of cotton, but of bleached polyester fibers, and they contain lots of chemicals. Secondly, the human body cannot digest cotton balls, so they accumulate inside the digestive tract and block food and liquids from passing through. This can be life-threatening, and removing the mass could require surgery. Several experiments pointed out in media interviews that eating cotton balls is not a diet, it's disordered eating, and the only kind of cotton anyone should be eating is cotton candy. Thankfully, we couldn't find any example of this bizarre fad taking anyone's life. Number seven, raw reality. Raw diets are pretty self-explanatory. As the name implies, it involves eating no-cooked foods. A raw diet typically consists of fruits, vegetables, and nuts. And it's extremely hard for a person to get enough nutrition this way. A writer for Paleo Leap reported feeling great for the first few weeks of his raw diet, but then he started feeling sick and tired all the time. He stuck with the diet for seven miserable months, during which time he became severely underweight. His skin began to flake, his teeth loosened, and he became diabetic. Convinced that he would die if he continued with the raw diet for much longer, the man finally called it quits. Thankfully, he recovered from the ordeal. At the very least, a raw diet leads to malnutrition, which can bring on a host of serious issues and could even kill a person. And it's bad enough when someone's misguided beliefs negatively impacts their health, but it's even worse when innocent bystanders are harmed. Number six, deadly diet pills. Anyone who struggled with weight loss and or body image knows what it's like to feel so desperate they try just about anything to achieve their desired weight. Amber Gerling of Chatham, England, weighed a healthy 126 pounds when her classmates began picking on her curvy figure at age 17. She tried to lose weight, but it wasn't coming off fast enough with standard dieting and exercising, so she started taking diet pills. In the meantime, Amber ramped up her fitness routine and cut her food intake to just 200 calories per day. Soon enough, she was taking a combination of four different pills, totaling 90 capsules per week. Her skin turned yellow, and she suffered from excruciating stomach pains. But by then, she was addicted and had no plans to stop. Amber's sister finally convinced her to go to the hospital. At just 56 pounds, she was literally reduced to skin and bones. She spent five months receiving treatment for her eating disorder and regained both her health and some much needed weight. Amber emerged from the ordeal looking as vibrant as ever. In hindsight, she understands how close she was to death's doorstep. Since her recovery, she's used her story as a platform for speaking out against the dangers of deadly diet pills. Number five, soy sauce cleanse. 
A few years ago, internet users began promoting a soy sauce colon cleanse, which involved drinking a liter of soy sauce in under two hours. People claim that the soy sauce purged the body of toxins. It sounds crazy, but one woman, known as only CG, was daring enough to try it, and the results were tragic. In the three weeks leading up to the cleanse, the 39-year-old lost 24 pounds, and for several months before that, she had only been eating canned fish and white bread. In addition to her preoccupation with her weight, she suffered from schizophrenia and had recently been released from a psych ward. Acting on the paranoid belief that the government had poisoned her, CG guzzled down an entire liter of soy sauce. Her heart began to beat really fast, and she resisted the urge to drink water, even though soy sauce is extremely high in sodium and can dehydrate the body. The woman's condition worsened from there. She collapsed and went into cardiac arrest while being rushed to the hospital. Doctors determined that she was suffering from extremely high salt levels in her blood, a condition called acute hypernatremia, and the soy sauce was to blame. A doctor who discussed the case explained that CG's stomach had filled with salt and began sucking the moisture out of her organs and muscles. It even caused her brain to shrink, which can cause permanent damage. He also mentioned that CG shouldn't have been able to drink an entire liter of soy sauce without vomiting, but perhaps her ailing mind enabled her to do so. In other words, it was clear that the woman was mentally separated from reality. Doctors tried to rehydrate CG, but the damage was done. She stopped being able to move, swallow, or speak, and became brain dead. Number 4. Death by Apple Cider Vinegar Lindsay Bone was a 20-year-old criminology student with a promising future. She lived in Brighton, England, while studying at the University of Sussex, and was engaged to be married. But the young woman's life was abruptly cut short one day in 2019 when her flatmates found her unresponsive in her bedroom. Lindsay's blood had a high but not fatal acidity level, and there were no other unusual substances in her system. The coroner was unable to determine a cause of death and described the tragedy as a mystery. Lindsay's mother is convinced that Lindsay's extreme dieting habits killed her. In the time leading up to her death, she followed a strict regimen of fasting and regularly taking apple cider vinegar tablets, which act as an appetite suppressant. An investigator who visited Lindsay's room found a journal with a list of harsh self-imposed dieting rules, including eating little to no carbs and limiting herself to 1,200 calories per day. She had eaten very little on the day she died, but still appeared healthy during her autopsy. Although the cause of death remains officially undetermined, the tragedy inspired Lindsay's mother to speak up and warn young women about the dangers of extreme dieting. Number 3. The Untold Dangers of Keto In late 2020, the Times of India announced the untimely death of 27-year-old Bollywood actress Mishti Mukherjee. Her friends and family said that she had passed away at a hospital from kidney failure brought on by the popular keto diet. The ketogenic diet is a low-carb, high-fat regimen similar to the Atkins diet. It involves replacing almost all of a person's carbohydrate intake with fats, which propels the dieter into a metabolic state called ketosis. The body becomes incredibly efficient at burning fat for energy instead of carbs, and it's safe for most people, but there are some exceptions. Doing keto long-term can have adverse health effects and put stress on the kidneys. Experts recommend treating it as a short-term plan and for people with kidney problems to be extra cautious and to consult with their doctor about the diet. The details surrounding Mukherjee's death are vague and don't explain exactly how her eating habits cut her life short, leading some people to wonder if keto was truly the culprit. But just like with any diet, it's a good idea to know what you're getting into and what the risks are. And the diet itself is not always to blame for a person's ailments. Someone on the World List team had a personal experience with the ill effects of keto when her partner became constipated for days on end. He was doing a variation of the diet known as dirty or lazy keto, where he was eating highly processed fatty foods with little nutritional value. She convinced him to go to the emergency room after his boss found him doubled over in excruciating pain and sent him home from work. And she thought that maybe her partner had finally learned a lesson about his dangerous dieting. But the doctor prescribed a laxative, and instead of changing his eating habits, he began to abuse the medicine. This just goes to show that when somebody has an unhealthy obsession with their weight, they'll stop at nothing to continue shedding the pounds. Number 2. Dehydration Diet You can probably already tell, based on the name alone, that the dehydration diet doesn't end well for most people. In 2017, an aspiring 18-year-old Muay Thai fighter from Australia named Jessica Lindsay purposely dehydrated herself in order to lose weight for a competition. Six days before the event, she did something called water loading, which involved drinking huge amounts of water at first, then decreasing the amount to none. 
Jessica hadn't drank any water on the day she went for her weigh-in. She collapsed after hours of intensive training and was rushed to the hospital. An autopsy found that she died from hyperthermia, or overheating, and dehydration. The coroner said that Jessica was unaware that she was in mortal danger and that she thought she had control of the situation. Her untimely death sparked outcries for a change in sports culture and laws. It's apparently common for athletes to deliberately dehydrate in order to lose weight, and sports officials were accused of turning a blind eye to this and other extreme weight cutting practices. People also called for more education on detecting the signs of someone going too far to make weight, as well as more oversight of trainers who prepare athletes for competitions. Jessica's grieving family is on board with these causes and hopes that people will help raise awareness and urge authorities to enact tighter regulations. And number one, a diabetic disaster. In 2016, a couple brought their six-year-old son, Aidan Fenton, to an alternative healing workshop in Sydney, Australia, in hopes of curing his diabetes. The week-long treatment involved slapping and stretching therapy, also known as Pida Legin. This is when a person is slapped repeatedly and assumes different poses to stretch their skin. Uh, that doesn't sound very healthy to me, but I'm no expert. At the beginning of the workshop, the instruction reportedly told Aiden's parents that taking insulin equated a drug addiction, so the couple stopped giving their son his life-saving medication. For the next several days, Aiden only ate and drank water and ginger. He eventually began vomiting black and yellow substances, which the instructor said was good for him. The ailing child lost his ability to walk, his eyes turned yellow, and his skin grew cold. He was suffering from something called diabetic ketoacidosis, and he ended up dying from it. Aiden's parents were charged with manslaughter. They argued in court that they believed the instructor was a doctor, so they didn't question his methods. The tragedy highlighted the controversial nature of Pai de la Jin, which experts claim has no medical or scientific basis, but many people argue that it has therapeutic benefits, and some even swear by it. Number 10. Dismembering the Wife In Vermont, Joseph Ferlazzo and his wife Emily Ferlazzo got into a pretty heated argument. It's normal. It happens to every couple at some point in their relationship. But Joseph, 41 years old and just shy of 20 years older than his wife, reacted a little out of the ordinary. Instead of settling the argument in a civil manner, he shot her to death, sawed her into pieces, and ditched her body parts in various trash bags. At the time of the dispute, Emily and Joseph were traveling from New Hampshire to Vermont. The couple was last seen staying at an Airbnb in Bolton. But then, nobody ever saw Emily again, and her family soon reported her missing to the police. The whole reason they had been going to Vermont in the first place was to go camping and celebrate their one-year anniversary. When questioned by the police, Joseph said that his wife simply disappeared after they got in a fight in their camper on the Saturday afternoon. But after more questioning, he finally broke down and admitted that he killed her in their camper. Plus, the police found some pieces of Emily inside the camper. After obtaining a search warrant, they found eight plastic garbage bags. One of the garbage bags contained Emily's leg. We don't know what the couple argued about that day, but according to the police, there was a history of domestic abuse. Joseph was already an unstable and violent individual. This time, he took his violence too far. Number 9. 120 feet below In the city of Santa Cruz, Bolivia, a man threw his girlfriend out of a window 12 stories to her death and then jumped out after. His name was Dagna Rojas and his girlfriend was Sarah Arauco. The terrifying incident was actually filmed by some eyewitnesses outside the building. In the video, Sarah can be seen tumbling from the window to the ground below, followed by Dagner lowering himself out and then letting go. Each of them died upon impact, suffering some of the most disturbing injuries imaginable. Their bodies were basically ripped apart by hitting the concrete. But just what in the world happened and who were these people? According to neighbors, there was some serious arguing going on in the couple's apartment before the falls. Sources close to the couple also told authorities that Dagna Rojas was known for being extremely jealous. His jealousy often made him act crazy. As for Sarah, she was a minor influencer on Instagram with a following of about 23,000 people. The pair had allegedly planned to get married in May. 
we'll probably never know what they argued about in that apartment to make Dagner throw his girlfriend out the window. Sadly, it's just another tragic example of domestic violence gone terribly wrong, even though these people were young, beautiful, and highly successful. It just shows you that anyone, you never know who, can throw their girlfriend out a window. Number 8. Lit on Fire In California, a couple was set on fire after a parking dispute that they got into with their neighbor. On the evening of August 15th, a woman opened a window to see flames exploding out of the home across the street from her. She then saw Jorge and Patsy Garcia sprinting out of the house consumed by fire. This neighbor, not the same one who had lit them on fire, said that she will never forget the screams coming from the throats or the smell of burning flesh wafting up to her window. Once the flaming couple were running around in their yard, other neighbors came outside, grabbed hoses, and desperately tried to put them out. It was absolute pandemonium, with the whole neighborhood in an uproar. And according to the San Joaquin County Sheriff's Office, it all happened because of Larry Galicinao. Larry shares a driveway with Jorge and Patsy. They had been having some issues about who was supposed to park where. Larry had enough of the couple and decided to take matters into his own hands. He lit a gas can on fire and ran straight through the couple's front door like a flaming kamikaze. The gas can exploded inside the home, catching the house on fire as well as the couple. The couple had a five-year-old daughter in the house too, but thankfully she was safe in the shower. The child walked out of the house without any injuries, but the couple was not so lucky. Last we heard, the couple was healing in intensive care, with burns across more than 80% of their bodies. They look like mummies because they're so covered in bandages. The pyromaniac who caused the incident is also heavily burned, with 65% of his body destroyed. Plus, he's now facing attempted murder charges. Number 7. The Worst Mother A California mother as well as her boyfriend have proved to be the worst couple, just the absolute worst. Both of them, the mother and her new boyfriend, have been convicted of murder. They killed the woman's five-year-old son by inflicting merciless abuse on the poor child. The mother is Jessica Prattner. She and her boyfriend, Adam Caldwell, joined forces as a couple to murder Zachary Prater Stokes, the woman's infant child. The pair had moved into the new boyfriend's home in a suburb of Sacramento back in 2016. Shortly after they moved in together, Caldwell began to get abusive. He would hurt Zachary physically and psychologically. The mother never did anything about it. Just two months after the couple started living together, Jessica phoned 911 and told the operator that her son had swallowed bathwater and was unresponsive. When the police arrived at the scene, they found Zachary fully dressed and dry in a bedroom, nowhere near a bathtub. They transported him to the hospital, but he was never able to regain consciousness and unfortunately died. Medical evidence confirmed abuse, with the autopsy revealing that the death was caused by blunt force trauma and forceful submission underwater. In other words, the dynamic duo beat up a baby and drowned it. They're now both facing upwards of 25 years in prison. Do you think 25 years is enough time served for this despicable crime? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 6. Jealous Boyfriend Angel Felix Rodriguez was in a relationship with Indira Ramirez Rivera. According to friends, their relationship would go from hot to cold, then cold to hot. It was an on-again, off-again kind of situation. They seemed great when they were together, but when they argued, it got pretty rough. Their most recent argument was so rough that it resulted in something so atrocious. You're probably not even going to believe me. Angel murdered his girlfriend by beating her up and then strangling her. According to Assistant District Attorney Catherine Falaska, he wanted her to suffer. One of the EMTs who was the first on scene was quoted as saying, It looked like the devil was in there. After Angel beat his girlfriend to death, he then left her corpse in their bed for two full days. What a psycho. But let's move over to the motive. Why on earth did this 23-year-old guy need to strangle his girlfriend and then leave her to die in bed? Apparently, it was because he was jealous. He didn't like the way his girlfriend dressed. He didn't like when she went out, and he especially didn't like that she got back from getting plastic surgery in the Dominican Republic. 
Then, when she stayed out overnight, Angel lost his mind. He just couldn't handle not knowing what she was out doing all night without him and got so mad that he killed her. Number 5. Frozen Family In Michigan, a couple was discovered dead outside of a pickup truck in the middle of the woods. With them was their 8-month-old son, also frozen to death. The couple, Amanda Pomeroy and Douglas Doherty, were reported missing by their families on January 16th after they hadn't been seen for four days. They had been driving through a remote part of the woods in northeast Michigan when their 2006 Chevy Silverado got stuck in the snow. And because the temperature dropped to below freezing, the couple couldn't figure out how to keep warm and ended up freezing. Clearly, they had never heard of starting a fire. By the time the deputies found them, they were frozen solid. They didn't have any shoes on either, which is a clear sign of hypothermia. When people get into the final stages of hypothermia right before death, they often take off articles of clothing because they feel weirdly hot. As for why the couple had gone for a late night drive through the woods in the first place with their baby, we'll probably never know. Number 4. A Couple's Hike In Massachusetts, a couple went for a hike in the mountains and never made it back out. No, they weren't killed by a witch or something, they just took a bit of a tumble. The two hikers, identified as Wayne Beckford and Cassandra Caceres, fell over the edge of an icy cliff on Door Mountain and dropped over 100 feet to the rough ground below. If they weren't dead immediately upon impact from their brains exploding out of their skulls, they were dead within just a few minutes. They weren't actually discovered until the day after they died, when they failed to check out of their hotel. The National Park Service got involved, they went out searching, and sure enough, they found the couple dead at the bottom of the cliff. It wasn't as easy as just peering over the cliff. The US Coast Guard had to use a helicopter equipped with thermal imaging technology to search for them all throughout the Door Mountain and the Cadillac Mountain. They searched over Friday and found them Saturday morning. As for how the couple managed to fall off the cliff, no one knows for sure. They could have been goofing around or they could have been trying to take a strange route that was too dangerous because of the ice. They could have even been trying to take a cute couple selfie when they tumbled over backwards and died. Number 3. Two Wives Down Jack Reeves was married many, many times, but he was the worst guy to get married to. One of his wives drowned in a supposed accident, one of them died by her own hand, and another one vanished without a trace. Looking at it from the outside, you might think Jack Reeves was the unluckiest man on earth. How could three of his wives have either died or vanished? It seems like a huge coincidence. Well, it was. One of his wife's bodies was exhumed from the grave and used as evidence to convict him of murder. The most recent murder involves his mail order bride from the Philippines. She vanished in 1994 and was never seen again. The other murder was of yet a different mail order bride who had allegedly drowned in a lake in 1984. But the one that finally got Jack Reeves convicted was the death of his first wife who had allegedly taken her own life by shooting herself in the head. When detectives exhumed her body after 16 years, they were able to determine that she hadn't actually pulled the trigger herself. Instead, somebody else shot her in the head and that someone else was Jack Reeves. He got 99 years in prison for killing his male order bride in 1984 and 35 years for killing his other wife Sharon and covering it up to make it look like a suicide. Number 2. Wife Killer Felix Vale, although now a very old man, has finally been found guilty of murdering his wife back in 1962. He was accused of throwing his wife overboard while they were on a boating trip in Louisiana's Calcasieu River. They went out in the middle of a dark night. When Felix made it back to shore, his wife wasn't with him. It was argued at the time that Mary Vale's death was an accident. Finally, all these years later, it's been proven that Felix killed her because she was pregnant with their second child and he didn't want her to have it. But just wait, because Felix ruined several other relationships as well. It's believed that he was involved in the disappearance of Sharon Hensley in 1973 and Annette Vale in 1984. Pretty much any woman he hooks up with seems to wind up either dead or missing and never found. In 1982, Annette was only 15 years old when she met Felix, who back then was 44. They married in 1983 and then she disappeared mysteriously in 84 and Felix still 
hasn't been held accountable. Number 1. A Wet Honeymoon While on their honeymoon in the Turks and Caicos Islands, a successful newlywed American couple drowned. There is no easy way to say it. They were killed by water just four days after they were married in New York. Muhammad Malik was an attorney in Manhattan, and his wife Noor Shah was a surgeon. They both died at the resort in the Bahamas while swimming in water that was chest deep. The water didn't even go up to their chins. They were splashing around in Como Parrot Key, having the time of their lives, when a riptide came out of nowhere and pulled them under. The tide was so strong that the inexperienced swimmers could do nothing to get out of it. Witnesses saw what was happening and rushed to the rescue, but by the time the riptide had released the couple, their lungs were already filled with water. CPR was performed on the scene, but all attempts at resuscitation failed. To make the incident even more horrifying, the father of the groom was on the beach when it happened. He had to watch his son be swallowed by the water like some kind of primeval sacrifice. He called it a devastating loss and said that the shock is beyond belief. He also went on to criticize the resort for not warning swimmers that they could possibly drown. But of course, that's just kind of one of the dangers of going to the beach. Number 10. All About the Nuts Privilege is something that most people abuse, using the power behind them to get what's in front of them, no matter how small or big it is. These are the people we hate the most, and frankly speaking, it's not that hard to find someone like this. For example, this passenger on a Korean flight who went absolutely nuts over a few nuts. On December 5th, 2014, at the JFK International Airport, a rich young woman going by the name of Cho hyun -ah entered the flight. She's the 40-year-old daughter of the airline's president, so obviously she has that air about herself. At that time, Miss hyun -ah was sitting in the first-class cabin and was waiting for the other flight to take off. Usually during that time, flight attendants are supposed to hand out snacks to their first-class passengers. An unlucky male flight attendant served Miss hyun -ah a few bag nuts. Miss hyun -ah got upset though and started lecturing the flight attendant, claiming that serving nuts on a plate should be the mandate and that she felt highly disrespected for being offered nuts in a bag instead. She made the man kneel down and bluntly requested an apology for not serving the nuts on a dish. She later ordered the man to leave the airplane, which she eventually did, but not before causing a 20-minute delay. This did not sit well with the airport authorities and the airline staff. Journalists soon began swarming in and harassing the airlines about what happened. A ton of officials also wanted Miss hyun -ah to be charged with endangering the flight. Of course, the president took the right actions and apologized on his daughter's behalf. She was sentenced to one year in jail. However, most people believe that she also deserved a lot of community service. Number 9. The Bottom Burper Have you ever been in a small room that has way too much stuff or people in it? Well, there are all kinds of things that could make people angry about being cramped up in a crowded place, from noisemakers to complainers. But there's nothing worse than someone who shamelessly passes gas in a cramped room, or in this case, plane. In February 2019, in a Dutch airline en route from Dubai to Amsterdam, a certain smelly situation arose. The flight had been pretty peaceful until an elderly man started releasing terrible gas. What's more, these farts came in batches of varying degrees, from silent squeaks to chaotic World War level blasts. Eventually, this gets on the nerves of everyone on board. So a male passenger politely asked him to stop, but the moral assailant went on. There came a point when even the captain of the plane had to personally ask him to stop, but the old man couldn't help himself. He ignored all of their requests. That's when two Dutchmen, seated with the man, took matters into their own hands. They picked a fight with him, which soon took a violent turn. The issue escalated to the extent of the aircraft seeking an emergency landing. The Dutchmen had to deboard the plane, along with their companions, while the cause victoriously stayed on. It was later reported that though not jailed, the Dutchmen were banned from flying with the airline due to oral abuse and misbehavior. Who do you feel bad for in this situation? The old man who couldn't contain his gas? or the passengers that had to deal with it. Number 8. Headbutt over face mask Apparently, one of the most dangerous attacks without any weapons is a headbutt, and it's certainly something that most of us wouldn't want to experience. Unfortunately for one male flight attendant, he experienced a headbutt in the most vicious way. On January 29, 2021, a 24-year-old intoxicated man named Daniel Hendry boarded a plane. This is amidst the pandemic and Daniel Hendry refused to wear a face mask. He also popped open a bottle of vodka inside the plane, which as we know, isn't allowed. Samuel Proietti, 
One of the flight attendants on board tried to persuade Daniel Hendry to follow the guidelines. Unfortunately, instead of using his brain to comprehend the situation, Daniel used his head to further escalate it. Yup, he violently pulled the male flight attendant and headbutted him hard. Thankfully, in a swift motion, Proietti was able to avoid the direct contact, but the headbutt grazed his right cheek. No real damage was done. Right after that, Daniel was restrained by the airport police and charged with assault. However, that wasn't the only charge he received. He also had a sexual harassment complaint lodged against him by a female flight attendant on his way in. Seeing the situation that he was in, we can confidently say that he did not use his head very well. Number 7. Air Brawl You may have witnessed a brawl amongst large crowds springing up randomly on the streets, at school, or in a public area. These type of fights tend to hurt a large number of people, and that's when the authorities have to step in before things get worse. But what happens when such a brawl breaks out in a confined space where no one can reach you? The answer is chaos. On June 9, 2011, a Virgin Atlantic flight, which contained 229 passengers and 13 cabin crew, had set off on its course from London to Barbados. The plane contained a dozen British passengers, and unfortunately, most were intoxicated by the time the flight took off. While they were cruising at 30,000 feet, one of the families who was celebrating their birthday of their relative got too noisy, and they were told to quiet down by another group of passengers. They didn't like being hushed. It got to a point where the mother and father of the family started throwing punches with the annoyed passengers, and soon, like a pinball or a line of dominoes, everyone on board started fighting. The flight attendants rushed to help, and even the air marshal tried to step in, but the fight was already too heated to be stopped. Thankfully, the plane was nearing its destination, and the pilots had already requested an armed force of police to breach and stop the fight. Once the plane landed, the brawl broke up, and about 10 people were arrested. The mid-air ruckus left a large number of passengers with either a black eye or some bruises. Truly, the situation might have been quite terrifying, considering there was no way out. Number 6. Lap Dance on the Flight On August 2, 2018, in an EasyJet airline from England to Spain, a rather strange scenario occurred. A woman, who seemed to have drank a little too much in flight, stood up and started giving free lap dances to male passengers and flashing her assets to everyone in the cabin. Contrary to what you might expect, nobody appreciated the lap dances. Eventually, the woman took it to another level and started doing cartwheels in the aisle and started tapping every passenger's head until one male passenger had had enough. He slapped her hand off his head, and that was more than enough encouragement for other irritated passengers to do the same. Eventually, the cabin crew was able to get everyone to calm down. The pilot informed ground staff of the obscenity that took place on board, and when the pilot touched the ground, the authorities were already waiting to escort the woman and the heated passengers away. Yikes. What would you do in this situation? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe button if you haven't already. Number 5. The Fight for the Reclining Throne How often do we see people fighting over something so small it's comical? quite often, but bet you haven't seen two full-grown men fight over the only reclining seat on the plane. On August 1, 2021, an American Airlines flight bound from New Orleans to Austin started off peacefully until two men started getting into an argument over a reclining seat. A bold man stepped in to stop the fight, and the crew was able to disperse the two, separating them into different rows. However, it was all well and swell until the plane touched down the runway, and as soon as the seatbelt sign went off, the two men were at it again. They literally started beating each other up in the aisle and in front of the other bewildered passengers. This time around, though, the man who had earlier stopped the two from fighting joined in. The pure chaos that unfolded was caught on camera, but eventually it was stopped. Once the fight came to a halt, the agitated men were escorted off the plane by law enforcement, and to think it was all over a reclining seat. Number 4. Sir, please return to your seat. Psychological experts say you'll never know when the person next to you will snap. Most people who snap commit unspeakable acts, and you definitely don't want one of them right next to you. Unfortunately for this next flight, one such person definitely snapped. On April 6, 2010, in a Delta Airlines flight, Bert Nepel, a 51-year-old banker on vacation, decided to sneak into first class despite having an economy seat. Of course, the cabin crew reacted accordingly, politely asking Mr. Nepel to return to his original seat, but Mr. Nepel refused. They kept asking him until he went totally crazy, eventually assaulting the flight attendant. His sudden outburst scared the crap out of the cabin crew, forcing them to lock the cockpit door just in case Mr. Nepel decided to bust in. Thankfully, a German soldier happened to be next to him, 
and on seeing the drama unfold before him, he jumped into action and without a hitch, restrained Mr. Nepel. The pilot then changed their course to the nearest airport towards Manchester. Mr. Nepel was dropped off and arrested. He earned a fine of a thousand pounds, which comes up to $1,300, and also a removal notice from his job. All he had to say the entire time was that he had a stomach ache, and the first class seats were the only seats that accommodated his pain. The flight attendant who was assaulted endured minor injuries, but was surely left traumatized. Number three, intoxicated Russian. On January 13, 2011, in a Metrojet flight bound for Egypt from Moscow, a 54-year-old businessman named Sergei Kabalov boarded the flight with his wife and three-year-old daughter. Nobody, not even his family, were aware of what was going to happen next. While mid-flight, Mr. Kabalov started drinking to the point to where he could barely think. Eventually, he felt the urge to take a wee, but the bathroom line was too long. This triggered Mr. Kabalov, and as soon as the flight attendant tried to calm him down, he assaulted him. The rest of the cabin crew tried to help, but Kabalov tried to fight them too. Later on, Mr. Kabalov casually popped a cigarette and tried to break into the cockpit. He threatened that he'd hijack the plane while also referring to himself as Russian intelligence, the equivalent of CIA, who don't have to think twice before killing anyone. However, this claim was completely bogus. At that moment, all the passengers feared for their lives, but thanks to the cockpit lock, Mr. Kabalov was held off. Eventually, the pilot made an emergency landing and the airport officials immediately restrained Kabalov. He ended up paying an $11,300 fine and served three years in jail. Number two, whoa, man. It's not just men who can sexually assault women. In fact, it can turn out to be far worse when it is woman on woman. On May 9, 2016, in an Alaska Airlines flight to Las Vegas, a 26-year-old woman named Heidi McKinney sat next to another woman in the same row. Everything was normal at first, but things slowly took a turn when McKinney decided to reach over and touch the woman beside her. This obviously made the woman uncomfortable and disgusted. She called the cabin crew in an effort to get McKinney off of her. Once McKinney was tied to her seat, the pilot requested the authorities in LAX about the unusual incident. McKinney was fined $2,500 for third-degree sexual abuse and was sentenced to county jail for an unknown period of time. It still remains unclear why McKinney thought of doing such a thing. Whatever the case, McKinney sure did learn her lesson the hard way. And number one, mystery flight. On May 7, 2017, an Oakland-bound Southwest Airlines flight was on a stopover in Burbank, California, when a brawl erupted between two men. No one knows why this fight even started, but it ended up being so vicious that one of the men, identified as Chaz Cable, was arrested and charged with two counts of misdemeanor battery. The other passenger involved in the fight suffered a bruised eye, a chipped tooth, and had to get stitches on his nose. Who do you think they were fighting over? Thanks for watching. Which of these passengers is the craziest to you? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.